Jets 1250. Tipman is obviously still the guy as long as he's healthy, but with the Jets lacking a prototypical center backup, which option would you most prefer them to add via free agency? Mason Cole, Connor Williams, injury concerns and in quotes, Nick Gates or Connor McGovern. I'd personally like Cole. Also, how much higher would you be on the Jets offensive coaching staff in regard the Jets could simply replace their coaches with our players? So Rogers is the quarterback coach and offensive coordinator and pass game coordinator. Brees is the running back coach and the run game coordinator. Garrett is the wide receiver coach. Conklin as a tight end coach and Tyron and Moses as the offensive line coach. I would say to the first point, if this Tipman thing really becomes a thing, I don't hate them adding a veteran, but I just like McGovern's not good. There's a reason he hasn't been signed yet. And there's a no. reason he's got a veteran de- minimum deal last year. I wouldn't mind trying someone else. I am sure. Connor Williams is pretty good. Just yeah. Su- like if he's significantly injured. I am sure though, if, if this Tipman thing is something we're talking about in two weeks, Rogers is going to be like, get McGovern back here. And they're going to be like, okay, like <laughs> at a certain point, let's just hope this stabilizes. Cause we like Tipman and they need him. And it would be really disappointing to watch this offensive line, take a step back as this guy gets the yips. So trim the mullet, talk to Chuck Knobloch, find a way to fix your yips and snap the ball. Cause I don't want to deal with this situation. No one wants to have to deal with this situation. They would try Schweitzer. I think, I think they like Schweitzer a lot internally and he's, He's like that, like savvy veteran who I think they feel like can just like pop right in and be fine. Yeah, there's a reason they kept him and gave him a two year deal versus what they paid McGovern. On the on the other point, look, it, it, yes, it, it would be fun in practice to have these guys actually just be the coaches. I, I do think like Rogers is going to be as involved in being an offensive coordinator as any player in the league, especially now that Brady's is gone. Like. You you probably can't find a situation where the quarterback is going to be in more control of what happens play to play than what's going to happen here. And on the offensive line, I think it's very much going to be like Keith Carter, like, cool, stay out of the way. Like, what are you telling Tyron Smith and Morgan Moses at this point? Like, they're going to, people are going to migrate and like listen to those guys. Uh, Simpson, you know, has been in the league for a while and has kind of climbed his way up now into being paid as a starter. So it's not like he's a rookie either. Those guys are going to be very hands-on. They have a good receiver coach in Sean Jefferson, which I think is like a sneaky upgrade that will help uh, the rest of that room. That's a young room. Yeah, it's a young room. And I'm glad I like like what they have with Sean Jefferson. And Brees is just like, he's just so damn, there's so much damn talent in that running back room. It's again, it's like you almost can't mess it up as long as you get the ball in their hands in space. But the staff is, it's a thing. And I promise there'll be a point in the first few weeks of the year that us and everyone else blows a gasket because of how they're coached on the offensive side of the ball. You just got to hope that it's not crippling. It doesn't cost them a game that they otherwise should win. That's what it comes down to. I think when in all seriousness, by the way, I searched Connor Williams just to make sure he was still a free agent. And it makes you laugh how many teams are having snap issues in camp already. That's all not the only is- ones. It's all quote tweets of get Connor Williams in here. And I'm like, oh, damn, Jets fans are really already over this. And none of them were Jets fans. It was a lot of Dolphins yeah. fans. They're having snap issues in camp. Man, getting off the ground in training camp in the, in the NFL is it is not an easy thing to do. So in all seriousness with the player coaches. I've said I really think that Tyron Smith and Morgan Moses are going to run that room. And you already see them working with Olu Fashionu so much already after practice. That's their room. Rodgers, we know, has full control of the offense. When you look at the three in between, they're fine with running back, wide receiver, and tight end. Like the coaching staff they have. Those guys are really working with nuances of the position where it feels like offensive coordinator, ironically, offensive coordinator and offensive line coach are the most vital and have the most power on an offensive coaching staff. And ironically, I think those guys have the least amount of power on this coaching staff because once again, Rodgers has full control over the offense. And then I think that why offensive line coaches often have a ton of control is because they also help with the run game. But I think that room is going to borderline run itself with the veterans they have besides the schematics that's on the coach as well. So it's a fun question. It's an interesting question, but it, great call out by you, Joe, that Sean, Sean Jefferson's a really good wide receiver coach in this league. It's why he's been around for so long. Why every time, whatever staff he's a part of might ultimately be 
let go, he instantly finds another job right away. He's just, and he's one of those guys that just wants to coach wide receivers. Like he shows up, he's ready to coach wide receivers. He's not typically trying to climb the ladder for more, which is pretty rare nowadays that position coaches that just, they just love, you know, their art form of coaching that position. And he's truly one of those guys. So that's a rare strength of the Jets offensive staff. All right. One final one talking about our guy, WMD question uh, from Brit jet 97 or more just like a concern. And I think this concern has been alleviated since he asked the question, because it's been a couple nice moments for him. Yeah. Any worry that WMD is not featuring much so far in camp. And when he does, he's not flashing and that Clemens is just not very good. So I think McDonald had a couple nice moments. I think today he actually beat Tyron Smith uh, for a sack. Like you're going to get moments where like that bend that you were texting about the other day is just insane. I just think we have to be patient and pragmatic about what we're expecting of him. He's not going to be a full-time player. Can he play 40, 40% of the snaps and be a Bryce hype? Bryce Huff type guy, maybe not last year's Bryce Huff, but two years ago, Bryce Huff, where it's like he gets six sacks and like he could have got a couple more and he's a, a really good role player. I, I'm still bullish that he will be a meaningful part of the defense. It's not like a traditional full-time starter. Clemens, I, we agree, is not good. And that's why a guy like McKinley or a guy like Watts or a guy like Taylor or a guy like McGregor will have a path to stick. And that stuff's not going to get sorted out till scrimmage and preseason games. That's when those guys need to pop and make an impact. Right. And it's just, I think that we also, we go into camp, right? And guys that might have had an underwhelming rookie season, you are instantly worried. You treat them so differently than everyone else at the start of camp. But, you know, because you want them to start on a positive note to kind of start to erase the memories of a quiet rookie season. But so how many times have you heard Jermaine Johnson's name at the start of camp? already right and jermaine johnson's a stud how many times have you heard quinn williams name during i haven't heard one one peep about quinn williams so i think you need to keep that in mind and i think mcdonald has had some moments already i do think his his physical ability if you put him in this scheme in advantageous situations to rush the passer like they did with bryce huff that got bryce huff paid a lot of money I think McDonald's will have his moments. So, and I thought when they did sparingly play him last year, he didn't look lost on an NFL field. Like I thought he had some moments as well. thought he had a, ri it's weird how quickly we bury out of our brains. McDonald had a great summer last summer. I mean, some of that film against the Panthers, he was the, the spin move. Like he was winning the summer last year. He had guys in hell. So I, I don't know. Ultimately, I think that, Let's see what happens. He's going to have a lot of reps in joint practices against good teams. He's going to have uh, a lot of reps in the preseason. And I think he's, I think he's going to turn the corner. I, I really do. I think it's, it depends where your expectations lie. If you think, Will McDonald is supposed to be the next Von Miller. Well, you're ultimately going to be disappointed. If you think he can be a legitimate factor as in this pass rush rotation with a skill set that, you know, Jermaine's a power rusher. A lot of the guys are power rushers. Reddick is very loose and different. Reddick's not here, by the way. So, Will McDonald is flexible. He can rush as a finesse rusher. He can rush with speed off the edge. He can kind of force the quarterback up into the teeth of the defense. It, there's a good, you know, he complements a lot of things well. So, I don't know. Once again, I'm bullish on McDonald. I know there's just not a lot of people that are. Um, and I think maybe my expectations are a little bit different. But... I think he's going to show out this summer and be just fine this year. I really do. Yeah, I wouldn't fully sell that stock yet. I think he'll have some really nice moments in the preseason and be a good situational role player uh, for them overall. All right. Thank you for the Discord questions. We appreciate everyone keeping them cranking through. Discord's uh, flying during camp. Discord's flying. Like the Super Bowl like, is it, on and off every other yeah, training camp tweet. It's like uh, the game day chaos of the Discord <laughs> yes. uh, is there with the training camp chaos of the Discord. And we're going to continue to have uh, these Q&As and address as many of them as we can uh, throughout. Also, we'll probably get some nice film room content as we get, uh, as we get yeah. to some preseason games and get some new tape to break down overall. So look, stay tuned for another episode on the feed tomorrow. Same with Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, just about every day from now until the Jets win the Super Bowl. Uh, the War Room feed uh, will be packed. Still merch available at BadlandsToj.com. Thank you, everybody, for listening, and we will talk to you soon. Yeah.